sometimes at church you get stirred up about the word. Sunday was a stirring up word. Uh, uh, she preached a word that could stir you up. But the problem is sometimes when you get home, I don't know how to do what I just heard. And we always talk about believe God, just got to have faith. And I thought about how many people actually know how to increase their faith. How, how do you do that? See, it's one thing to confess something in your mind, but it's not words to confess in your mind that make God move for you. All right, so I'm going to go through some scriptures and see if I can help bring some enlightenment to. First thing I want to put the word up there, no. Uh, in the, uh, K-N-O-W, I'm sorry. You shall know the truth. You shall know the truth. Gnoskos is the Greek word, gnoskos. You shall know the truth, gnoskos, and the truth you know will make you free. The Hebrew counterpart of that is Adam and Eve. When God told uh, Adam and Eve, they said that Adam knew Eve for them to produce. That's Y-A-D-A, Yode. What it says the idiom in the Jewish customs is when it said to know someone is sexual intercourse. So the whole meaning of the scripture is I have to know God intimately. The, the closest thing that a wife and husband can do is have intercourse together. So the word that God uses there is intercourse with me and be so close to me that you know my move and I know your move. You already know our move, but in order for us to know his move and know what he's doing, and the best way to know God is to know his word and know how he thinks, we know that from the word. That's how we judge prophecy. We know by what he speaks. That's how we know from a revelation we get if it's from God because we know his ways by his word. All right, so Hebrews 11, 16, I want to put that word, Y-A-D-A, Yade is the... Uh, that's the Hebrew counterpart of Gnoskos. Don't ask me to spread Gnoskos right now. <laughs> could have asked me earlier when I first got here, I could spell it. But Gnoskos, that's the Greek word, which is the counterpart, yade, which is to know. It's almost like yada, but it's intercourse with. So when they heard that, the idiom, when they heard you got to know that person, it meant intercourse. All right, so Hebrews 11.6. Hebrews 11, 6. Let's see if we can walk through this a little bit and see if I can, if I can fulfill my assignment tonight to help bring some understanding. Because some people don't know, how do, how do I do this thing? How do I get faith? And see, we, we need faith for this to work. We don't just come in here and say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I, I, I will fall down on my enemy intercession, which is the word, what is it again? Pow, pow, gal, pow, gal. I taught you the word, and I don't remember that. Pile gal, to fall down, to fall down on the enemy, warfare word, to expand your boundaries. So we can't just think it. It has to be in the heart. In fact, before I go to that one, look at Romans 10 for a moment. Romans, is it Romans 10? Yeah, Romans 10. I think that's the one I want. Then I come back to that when I'm going. Romans 10, 8. Watch, watch what it says here. Watch the order of it. But what say it? The word is not even in that what? Mouth. The word the mouth is mentioned first, right? It's even in your mouth. And heart. That is, is the word the of faith which, which we, we preach. preach. Next verse. But what? If thou confess with uh, thou, what comes first? Mouth of Mouth comes before heart, right? And next verse, then it, it, and believe in your heart. Then 10th verse, the order switches. Because once you do it with your mouth long enough, it's now in your heart, which is not the thing that pumps, but your subconscious mind, your spirit, your understanding. It's in the center of your being. It's a part of you to the place that I can't help but believe. Now, when I say believe, I'm going to use the word believe and faith interchangeably because faith is pistis, which is the noun, 
believe is the verb. Pististo is the verb. So it's the same word. I can't have faith if I don't believe. So it's, it's, the, it's actually the same word. One's the noun, one's the verb, the action verb. I believe, I have faith. Now, okay, now go where I told you to go. I just want to show you the order. When we keep saying it with our mouth, 11 6, Hebrews 11 6. When I keep saying it with my mouth, it now becomes a part of my. So if I want to increase my faith, I got to start doing something with my mouth. mouth. And if we understood the word salvation, which is the word zozu, then we'd understand that it covers a whole lot more than not going to hell. It covers deliverance. In fact, the woman that touched the hem of his garment, it says she was made whole, which is zozu. zozu. So my salvation also includes my deliverance, my healing, my finances. Everything about you is dependent on salvation, not just I'm saved so I won't go to hell or have somewhere I can be buried. Got it? And there's a whole lot of more. Uh, I think it was Paul that said he bought me safely. It's the word zozu, which is also salvation. There's safety in it. There's deliverance in it. There's healing. There's wholeness. There's financial increase in it. That's why when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, Egypt is symbolic of an Old Testament. Egypt is symbolic of an Old Testament. Sin. World. The world. Coming. <laughs> Egypt represents the world. It means I came out of the world to get saved. That's what Egypt represents. When they came out, what did God have to have the Egyptian to do for them. Make them rich because salvation is supposed to cover your financial needs being met. So in order for them to represent salvation, they had to have something. Our problem is sometimes we use our faith on other stuff but not on our money. Oh, help me, Jesus. So if this thing works, and we know it does, because when I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, he saved me, changed my life. Things about me changed. I know I'm born again. And if my money is hooked to that, and if my success is hooked to that, and if my healing is hooked to that, I got to start confessing my healing and my money more, too. And if I keep saying it, it gets in my spirit, and now I believe it so much until I can see it, I can smell it. It's like almost I can touch it. When you actually walk in faith, you can, you can feel like you're in the house you're trying to get. You're walking in it. Now, okay, Hebrews 11, 6. I'm going to give you a chance to ask questions because I talk fast and, and sometimes things I think simple is not simple for some folk. And that's not a joke. I'm just, it depends on your background, terminology. Sometimes terms that are used sometimes may throw you off. I was listening at... Uh, Noel Jones last night, so I know the feeling. I almost had to pull out, I did have to pull out my, theolo my uh, systematic theological book on him a little bit and see you know, what's he talking about. What he's talking about, Tilly and some of the folk that he studies theology from. Okay. Uh, Hebrews 11, 6. Brilliant man, brilliant man. But without faith, it is impossible to okay. please him. Okay, now, that gets me right there. Because no matter how I usher, no matter how I don't miss church, no matter how I give tithes and offerings, if I don't have faith, I ain't pleasing God. Ooh. The first thing faith has to be is confessed. Mm. I activate my faith by confession with my mouth. I'm just going back, just repeating what I said earlier in a different way. I have to say it until it becomes a part of me. Faith comes. Faith comes. Faith comes. Say that. That's simple. Faith, faith comes. comes. It comes. Faith comes. I need faith to come. Just like I need money to come. Faith comes by. The word by is a Greek word, which means it is the origin of. That I don't get faith no other way but by hearing. Now, people can listen but not hear. 
You've been talking to some